So I've got a nice problem today that was suggested by Good Place to Stop, and it comes from the 2020 European Math Cup. And it's one of these competition problems that involves two players playing a game and determining if there's a winning strategy. And while I like these problems a lot, I've never presented one on the channel because I think it's kind of difficult to present these well. Or maybe I'm intimidated by the idea of like coming up with a good presentation for these types of problems. So this is my first go at it. So be nice to me in the comments. Okay, so let's see our setup. So let's look at the statement of this problem. So we start with a prime number, which is called P, and then Troy and Abed are playing the game. So we've given the name of the players Troy and Abed. So Troy starts by writing a natural number, which I'll call X on the board, and then producing a sequence of rational numbers. So this is an infinite sequence of natural numbers determined by A sub N. Then he gives that sequence to Abed and Abed plans his moves based on this sequence. So his first move is to replace the number that's on the board with either it plus the first term of the sequence or it times the first term of the sequence. So I've notated that as y1 equals x plus a1 or x times a1. And then that continuously repeats. So at every step, Abed can replace the number on the board with either itself plus that term from the sequence or itself times that term from the sequence. So here we've got y n plus 1 equals y n plus a n plus 1 or y n times a n plus 1. And Abed wins if at some point there is a multiple of p on the board. And so the question finally, is if P is equal to 10 to the 9 plus 7, does Troy have a winning strategy? So here's a fact. This is a prime, but it's too large of a prime to do anything with directly. So we'll just see how this shakes up, treating the prime as arbitrary kind of as we move forward. And I should say that the answer is yes. Troy can construct his sequence so that it's impossible for Abed to win. In other words, it's impossible for Abed to get a multiple of P on the board. So I'll write that up here. Troy can always win. So here is the idea, is to build x and the sequence a sub n so that, so that y sub n plus a sub n plus 1 is congruent to y sub n times a sub n plus 1 mod p for all n. So since we're aiming to get a multiple of p on the board, we might as well play this whole game mod p. But if we construct a starting term in a sequence so that this congruence is always true, Abed only has the illusion of choice. So in other words, Troy has complete control over whether or not Abed can write a multiple of p on the board. Okay, so let's maybe see how we can do this. So we'll start by setting x equal to any natural number as long as it's not 0 or 1 mod p. So I'll just say it's not congruent to 0, 1 mod p. So that's the starting term. And now we need to construct our sequence. So like I said, we want these two to be congruent for all n. So we'll say y sub n plus a n plus 1 is congruent to y sub n times a n plus 1 mod p. So this isn't what we have so far. This is just what we want. We still need to construct our a's to make this happen. But let's maybe do a little bit of algebraic manipulation on this to see how we could do that. But that gives us a n plus 1 times the quantity y n minus 1 is congruent to y n modulo p. So like I said, that's just from moving th some things around. Now, under nice circumstances, y sub n minus 1 is invertible. And we're actually going to prove this carefully, but let's just assume that it's invertible for now. So that gives us a n plus 1 is congruent to y n minus 1 inverse times y n mod p. Like I said, this is only possible 
if y sub n is not congruent to one mod p. But that means that y sub n minus one is not congruent to zero mod p. So let's notice that that gives us a strategy for inductively defining our sequence. So notice a1 will be defined as y0 minus one inverse times y0. But y0 was just x. And then a2 will be y1 minus 1 inverse times y1, and then so on and so forth. So like I said, we've got some motivation for how Troy should be able to build his sequence. So now let's get rid of this and then prove it carefully. Okay, so we can summarize part of the last board with the following claim. For all natural numbers n, y sub n is not congruent to 1 mod p. We'll prove this by induction, and our base case is just super easy because of how we chose our first number x. So let's recall that y naught was equal to x, which is not congruent to one mod p. Okay, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for k bigger than or equal to zero, yk is not congruent to one mod p. And then let's construct yk plus one. So notice that yk plus one is equal to ak plus one times yk. But let's recall that ak plus one was defined in a way so that this guy was congruent mod p to ak plus one plus yk. So that means you only have to consider one of them. Okay, great. So let's recall what ak plus one was. So that was yk times yk minus one inverse, and then we've got this extra yk on. And this isn't actually equal, this was congruent modulo p, but that's all that matters here. Okay, but let's notice that that is congruent to yk squared times yk minus one inverse modulo p. But now let's, by way of contradiction, so I'll put that here, by way of contradiction, suppose that this is congruent to one mod p, which remember we're trying to show that it's not to complete the induction step. But multiplying both sides by this inverse right here gives us that yk squared is congruent to yk minus one modulo p, like that. Or we've got the polynomial equation yk squared minus yk plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, next we can multiply both sides of this by minus yk minus 1 and see what happens. So we're going to multiply the left hand side and the right hand side by that quantity. So let's see what that gives us. That's gonna give us the following new congruence of minus yk quantity cubed minus one is congruent to zero modulo p. Okay, but then that tells us that minus yk quantity cubed is congruent to one mod p. But then because of Fermat's little theorem, that tells us that three must divide p minus one, or that p is congruent to one modulo three. And that's actually a problem. But why is that a problem? That's because our original prime, 10 to the n plus seven, is in fact congruent to two mod three, which means we've reached a contradiction. And what did we contradict? We contradicted this assumption right here that says yk plus one is congruent to one mod p. But that means that yk plus one is not congruent to one mod p, finishing the proof of this claim. Okay, so we've just shown that all of these yn's are not congruent to one mod p, which means we can construct our sequence a sub n like we described before. Now, let's get rid of this and show that none of these y sub n's are in fact congruent to zero mod p or they are not multiples of p, which 
finishes our proof that Troy has a winning strategy. So far we've proven that Troy has a strategy that says regardless of Abed's choice here, these two numbers are always congruent modulo p. Now we just have to show that they're never congruent to z zero mod p. In other words, they're never multiples of p. And we have that with the following claim. So for all natural numbers n, y sub n is not congruent to zero mod p. P. And we're going to prove this with induction again. So the base case is just straightforward by our original choice x, which means we'll start with our induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 0, yk is not congruent to 0 mod p. And then we'll look at yk plus 1, which is equal to ak plus 1 times yk. Okay, but let's recall that ak plus 1 is in fact equal to yk times yk minus 1 inverse times yk. And this is all happening mod p. Okay, but now let's notice that that is equal to yk squared times yk minus 1 inverse modulo p. But then by our induction hypothesis, this is not congruent to 0 mod p. And by our first claim, this is not congruent to 0 mod p. But if their product is congruent to 0 mod p, well, that's impossible because p is prime. So putting these two things together, that tells us that their product is not congruent to 0 mod p. But that finishes off the proof of this claim and shows that the number that Abed writes on the board is never congruent to 0 mod, mod p. In other words, it is never a multiple of that prime. And that's a good place to stop.